Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. How are you doing? I hope you're keeping well. My name is Anin Joroge, Kenya. I am excited today because today is the first day of a new month. Yay! We have seen the Lord. And I was just remembering the other day. Oh my gosh, we are almost at the end of the year. And what a God. He has taken care of us. He has provided for us. He has um been with us. Emmanuel, God with us. He has never left us nor forsaken us. And we have seen him all throughout the year and even as we get closer to the end of the year to the last few months of the year 2023 we have a testimony and if you do not yet have a testimony on your lips just give thanks for the very breath that you have today for the very life that you have because it is him who has kept us this far and he has kept us this us this far because he has something in store for us so i want us to make a prayer and then i will tell you the agenda of the day Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to appreciate you for what you have done for us. You have been with us, taking care of us. We have seen your hand, O oh God. And behold, this is a new month, Lord, a brand new month, God. Thank you, Jehovah, for giving us life, for the gift of life. Father, we thank you for salvation. Thank you, my God, for friends. Thank you for family. Thank you for a country which is peaceful, O oh God. Thank you for jobs. Thank you, Father God, for giving us shelter, my Father. Thank you for those king of our glory who are joining me this hour everlasting God I pray that you will bless them even as they listen in God even as they watch this video I pray that your blessings will shine upon them that you will open the eyes of their hearts that they will see what you are saying in the name of Jesus have your way good Lord in the name of Jesus we pray and believe amen hallelujah so this month the month of se September is all about faith hmm. If you have been following us on social media, on YouTube, whatever it is that you have been following Anijo Rogero Kenya Ministries, you know that we have been in the book of Proverbs for the entire month of August and the Proverbs have spilled over in September. But let's see what God will do. Maybe there are a few uh, Proverbs that will come up even as we speak about faith this month. So today is Friday, the first day of September and we begin talking about faith so this is called faith fridays the five fridays of september will all be about faith every morning at 10 a.m i will publish a video on youtube i will also post the link on facebook and all my socials for you to just come and um listening to what the lord has in store for us so god bless you for joining so let's get right into it um so what is faith and what are we going to be looking at this entire month? So every Friday we'll be talking about, we'll be picking a topic and going right into it. And even after I announce this topic, if the Lord speaks to me to um, add something on into the topic, I will incorporate in in my in the sermons even as we go so i'll be taking about an hour probably sometimes less than an hour but the maximum i can go uh i will go is an hour so bear with me if an hour is too much for you uh that is the direction that i have to do uh to go about how to go about this so we will look at the god kind of faith we will look at um this is what we will look at today, the God kind of faith. And what is faith? We will look at the God kind of faith. And then next Friday, we will look at what the Bible says about doubts, okay? Doubts and lack of faith. We will look at what the Bible says about doubt and lack of faith. The third Friday, we will talk about the evidence of things hoped for which is the topic of this month, the evidence of things hoped for. So it is at the center of the month, which is the third Friday of the month. The fourth Friday, we will talk about faith, love, and hope. Hope, faith, and love. Love, hope, and faith. We'll talk about those three things because they are triplets. We cannot talk about faith and not talk about love. We cannot talk about love and not talk about hope. We cannot talk about hope, hope and fail to talk about faith. So we are going to talk about the triple, uh, the triple, uh, the triplets, which is hope, faith, and love. That will be on the fourth Friday, and then on the fifth Friday, the fifth and the last Friday of September, we will talk about how to make our faith 
work for us, how to make your faith work for you. That we will talk about on the fifth Friday. So you can maybe rerun run that again and just take notes. Uh, however, I will post it on my Facebook. So you'll be able to, to get the summary of what we will be looking at this month. Okay. Uh -huh. So today we are talking about the God kind of faith. I will uh, read a couple of scriptures even as we go and as the Holy Spirit helps me. So it will be helpful for you to have a pen and a notebook to take notes. And it will be helpful if you can follow the entire month because just one day in a month, you know, good thing it's on social media that you can watch at leisure at when you have time. It's Fridays, so Fridays at uh, 10 a.m. You can watch it, watch it during your lunch break or whatever, but just make a point of watching. And even as you watch, make sure to write because if you fail to write on day one, you will not write on day two. You will not write the second Friday. So write what we are reading and uh, see where to apply. And even as we have been reading the book of Proverbs, we've spoken extensively about application. So I'm inviting you to not only listen, not be a hearer, but also be a doer of the word. So what is faith? What is this God kind of faith? First of all, let us look at what faith is and then we will go into the God kind of faith. So, as usual, when we're doing teachings, for me, I like to take notes. So, that's why you will see me looking down. I'm looking down because I'm looking down at my notes. And then my Bible is here. So, I'll be reading scripture and also referring to my notes. Sometimes I'll deviate as the Spirit leads. I have given the Holy Spirit full uh, liberty, yeah, to just go ahead and speak to us as he wishes but i know he is not the spirit of confusion he cannot ask me to speak about faith and then i start speaking about uh other things so he is a spirit of of wisdom he is the spirit who is not uh the author of confusion. So I am 100% sure we will stick to faith and whatever it is that uh, I speak about as inspired by the Holy Spirit is going to be in line with faith. Faith is the spiritual power to move physical or spirit, spiritual obstacles or obstructions. So faith is the spiritual power or law. When I was looking at faith, I was seeing it as a law as well as well as power it is a physical law and this faith you know we say about we talk about faith that moves mountain so faith is a spiritual power that um a spiritual power to move physical or spirit spiritual obstacles or obstructions faith is also a spiritual defense against satan and his cohorts faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the manifestation of things to come. Faith is a surety. Faith is a conviction, not just a conviction, but a strong conviction, a strong persuasion. Having a strong persuasion, that is faith. Faith is the title deed that the things you hoped for are tangible, are finally yours. You're finally touching them, feeling them, seeing them. This is faith. Faith is the evidence, is a title deed, is a surety, is certainty, and it is a strong conviction. And we will look at all that as we go. And we also have the saving faith. All right. We are saved by grace through faith. So you cannot be saved without faith. And you cannot be saved without grace. So we are saved through grace, but it is by faith. So faith is the means by which we are born again. Faith is the means by which we are born again. Another one that I loved most is that faith is a way of living. Faith is a way of living. And the Bible says the just shall live by faith. <laughs> now faith is we know this from the hall of faith Hebrews chapter 11 the Bible says now faith is so faith is present faith is not tomorrow faith is not yesterday faith will not faith will not come but faith is now right now faith is you know having confidence 
confidence in and conviction that is faith yeah okay mm -hmm. all right i said faith is a spiritual power i will give you scriptures to write uh, but let me read one uh, matthew 17 20 Matthew 17, 20. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, as I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard said, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. All right. So if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move yeah, move to there. You direct the mountain and the mountain moves and nothing will be impossible to you. And we see here that faith is a spiritual power that um, is not determined by its size. Faith is a spiritual power. It is, however, not determined by its size. The size of faith does not matter. If your faith is as big or as small as a mustard seed, it can move a mountain. So you do not need a big faith to move a big mountain. No, no, no. You just need faith. You need to be convicted. You need to be convicted as we say that now. Not tomorrow. It is right now. Faith is the conviction the confidence we have for things that we have hoped for, that we uh, we have them already. It is the title deed that we already have those things that we hope for. All right. Uh, Mark eleven twenty two. Mark eleven twenty two. So if you're reading with me, the Bible goes like Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So Matthew, Mark, Luke. So Mark is after Matthew. So. Mark 11, I actually really appreciate those Sunday school songs. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. <laughs> when you're reading and you want to find a scripture and you're like, Guy, Leviticus, Iko Wapi. And then you remember that song, Genesis, Exodus. You will find, you will not find yourself looking for Leviticus in Proverbs, after Proverbs. You know exactly which books follows. So it is good to remind ourselves um, to teach our children even of the things that are now working for us. These ones are working for us. So if you don't take your child to Sunday school, you need to because they will learn things that will help them in their adult life. Like that, that song for me. Uh, yeah. Mark, Mark, Mark 11, 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. And scholars have told us that this have faith in God means uh, the, the original interpretation was supposed to be or is have the God kind of faith, not just having faith in God, have the God kind of faith. For assuredly, I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, there goes a mountain again, be removed and be cast into the sea. And these are the words of Jesus and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he, he says, right? We have seen a repetition of what we read in Matthew 17. Jesus is saying the very same thing. And that is why doubt is one of the topics that I will talk about. Because God, when, when Jesus speaks about faith, he will emphasize that you should not doubt. And even when you read the book of James, when we were reading the book of James in regards to wisdom, uh, the prayer for wisdom, James says that um, when you pray for wisdom, if you're lacking wisdom, ask. And when you ask, the person who is asking needs not to have doubts in his heart. Do not have doubt. Do not waver. Be convicted that what you have asked for is actually yours right now. That you don't need to wait um, for next year to receive it. That you ask for it now and it is yours right now. So ha be convicted. And that is why doubt will be one of the topics that we will talk about. Because so many of our prayers are pending the manifestation of our prayers is most of them are pending because of uh, doubts, not because of lack of faith. It is because of doubts. So you, ha you can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head. You can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head. We will look at that next Friday. So for assuredly, I say to you, 
Assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain. So Jesus here is emphasizing, assuredly. It's like in Swahili, you would say, Aki ni me kwambia. You know, it's like, you know, uh, it's almost like swearing. Assuredly, like I am sure of what I am saying. That if you say to this mountain, Jesus himself is convicted of what he's telling us. And if he's convicted of what he's telling us, then that means this thing works. That you can say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and not doubt in your heart, you know, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. We will. This is one of the verses, scriptures that we will come back to so many times during our faith Fridays. So let's read Matthew 21, 21. This I am just trying to show you how faith is a spiritual power. Faith will move that mountain for you. Yeah, Matthew 21, 21. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, there goes another mountain. But if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Why is Jesus uh, bringing the issue of the mountain when he is talking about faith? We will talk about that. The mountain moving faith. We will talk about the mountain moving faith. So here, his emphasis is, uh, assuredly I say to you, if you have faith, right? If you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to this fig tree. So there was already an example for the disciples as Jesus is talking to them. Because you see, when you go uh, back to the previous scriptures in the same uh, chapter, you will see, I think, verse 19, and seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to eat and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. And then the disciples saw it and marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? So the, the, the kind of faith, the God kind of, kind of faith is such a spiritual force that it commands things to be whatever it is that you speak immediately. Like it is the God kind of faith, the faith we are talking about here is an instant power. It is not a power that works later. It is a power that works on the spot, right? It is a spiritual power that works on the spot. The God kind of faith. And we will see that when we get to Hebrews. Let me just read Matthew 8, 26. And then we, we go to the next uh, point. Matthew 8, 26. The Bible says, but he said to them, why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Why are you fearful? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the seas, and there was a great calm. This means that Jesus demonstrated faith. Jesus demonstrated faith. He tells them that they are fearful, and he tells them that it's because they have little faith. And we will also talk about that because we have seen faith the size of a mustard seed, and here we are seeing a little faith. So what does it mean? Does it mean People have different, faith comes in different sizes. We will talk about that as we go. So he, he demonstrates to them what it is that he expected them to be. He demonstrates and he says that, um, uh, O ye of little faith, why are you fearful? So even fear, fear is the evidence of a lack of faith. Fear is the evidence of lack of faith. All right? We will talk about that on Friday, about when we're talking about doubts, we will also see fear come up so many times. So he rose and rebuked the wind and the seas, and there was a great calm. So faith is a spiritual force, a spiritual power that calms storms. Not only, uh, not only does this kind of faith move mountains, but this kind of faith also calms the seas. If there is a storm, this kind of faith is such a spiritual force that the seas hear its voice and they obey. The seas hear its voice and they obey. The mountains, when they are spoken to and they are told, move from here and go there, they shift and move because the God kind of faith is a spiritual force 
that has a sound that can be heard not only by things and people, but even by creation. And what we have looked at so far is that the seas have been established by God. The mountains have been established by God. But if you have this kind of faith, you are able to move that mountain. So he is telling us that, you know, even things that have already been set, you know, the mountains were established, have already been established, but you can move that mountain. The things that have been established, things that, you know, cannot easily be moved by human power. If you have that kind of faith, the God kind of faith, you are able to move mountains. You are able to calm the storms if you have a God kind of faith. We see also that um, faith, the God kind of faith, is spiritual defense or a weapon. I will not dwell so much on it as a weapon. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, I'll not dwell there because I need to go to Hebrews 11 for a bit. So it is a spiritual defense against strongholds. And these strongholds are not strongholds that we can see with our eyes. All right. So we've moved from the spiritual aspect, the aspect of, you know, the this kind of faith moving things that have been established in nature and creation, mountains and the seas and the, the storms and the winds, you know, and now these are strongholds within ourselves. Yeah. Things that are in us, those we say generational patterns, generational curses obstacles and strongholds in our minds this kind of faith the god count kind of faith is a weapon and defense shield yeah we call it the shield of faith the shield of faith you put your shield on your chest that when the wiles of the enemy are thrown hits on your faith hits on your faith doubt laziness hits on your faith generational curses those they call generational curses when the enemy tries to come against you, you know, they find that you have already shielded yourself. Shielded yourself in, in, uh, in that whatever it is the enemy is trying to do, trying to bring issues and saying, you know, your mother went through this and so now she went through it at 40 and now you are 40 and it is your turn now to go through it because you have a strong conviction that you have been delivered. You have a strong conviction, faith, remember? You are strongly convicted that what the Bible talks about, the redemption in Christ Jesus, that you have been redeemed and you, the salvation package contains our deliverance, that you have already been delivered. And so when the enemy tries to bring this to you, you already have a defense in your mind. You have a defense. Right. And because you have that defense, you know, you say to the enemy. OK, she had it at 40, but I'm not going to have it. It's not my portion. I've already been born into the family of God. I'm born again. I don't know why you're even bringing this up. My DNA and, and my parent is not the same. No, 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 no. It's not. I've been ad adopted in the family of God. So if it is not in the family of God, it's not going to be my portion. That is a defense. You know, so faith is a defense. It is not only um, a spiritual force, but it is a defense. You have to be strongly convicted about what the Bible says about you. You have to be strongly convicted about what the Bible says about your redemption. You have to be strongly convicted what the Bible sp speaks about your freedom, your healing, right? That when sickness comes, sickness and infirmity, the Bible has told us that by his stripes we were healed. So healing is past tense. So if there are symptoms, you know, you talk to them and you're like, I don't get it. What are you doing here? Do you know you're illegally in my body? Why are you even, you know, attempting to cause all this discomfort? I judge you right now in the name of Jesus, because we have also been given a name that is above every other name. But because, and because you have, you are strongly convicted that by his stripes you are healed and he has given us a name, the name of Jesus to use. You come with the name of Jesus and speak to the sickness and say, hey, look, I'm not even going to argue with you. This is the law. You know, I, I know, I really know you, you know, like you, you want to really mess me up it's it's cold season and you feel like i also need to have a cold but i'm sorry not now not ever 
I'm not going to have a cold. I'm not going to have a headache. Was that whether I had enough sleep or not? Whether I, you know, there's those people who get headaches be before um, if they do not they do not take tea in the morning. That is also foolishness, right? Because you have conditioned your mind that if I do not have tea in the morning, I'm going to have a headache. Why a headache? Did the Bible not say that by His stripes we were healed? Why a headache? Why pain, right? Why pain? Why, and, and I, I really love when I read testimonies of women who have had uh, painless childbirths, right? And because they have understood their redemption, they have understood that the curse was taken away, it was broken. And if the curse was taken away, that means even the curse that was pronounced against the woman has been taken away. And, and so we can actually give birth without feeling pain. Yes, it is possible. You can have the contractions and not have pain. And somebody spoke and said that pain does not serve any purpose. Pain does not serve purpose in childbirth. So if you are pregnant and you are believing God uh, for, a, for safe delivery, most of the times we will pray for safe deliveries. We will pray for the nurses, the doctors, the hospital, but we will forget to pray and to declare about the pain right? Pain does not serve any purpose in child delivery. So you can co have contractions and the baby can come out very well without feeling any pain. Only if you are convicted of your redemption, only if you are convicted that your redemption came with healing, if you are convicted that your redemption came with deliverance, if you are convicted your deliverance and your redemption came with a package more than salvation, favor, blessing, finances, you know, all these is a part of the package of salvation. But if you are not strongly convicted, you are not going to be able to enjoy that. So this uh, faith, this God kind of faith is a spiritual defense against things that are not ours. You, you refuse to take that sickness, you refuse to take that condition, and you don't even need to sweat about it. You don't need to sweat about it. Just speak to it. And you call upon the name of Jesus, speak to it, tell it how illegal it is, you know, and just watch it live. Watch it live. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord are roaming to see, to, searching for somebody who they, he can show, uh, he can show himself strong to. And if you have stood on his word and you have declared this way, but pain is still persisting, God's eyes will see and he will come and rescue the situation. He will come and defend himself because he is also jealous about his name. He jealously guards his name and he cannot promise us to use faith. He cannot promise us of our redemption in this way as a full package. And then we start suffering of things that are not even in the package. No. All right. Faith is a weapon against sickness. We see the woman with the issue of blood. <laughs> she was strongly convicted that if only I could touch the hem of his garment. So faith is a strong conviction against sickness, as I have just said, that she was convicted. For us now, we don't need to touch the hem of his garment. We don't need to press through the crowds. We don't need to shout like Nicodemus. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. <laughs> we, don't, we don't need to shout. We only need to declare and, and, and claim for our healing. Just claim for it because it has already been given. It is there. It is for us to receive and claim for it and declare of the manifestation to come to pass. It is that simple. Yes, so faith is a weapon against sickness. And faith is a spiritual defense. So if you're a Christian, you should not feel helpless. No situation should make you feel helpless if you understand the God kind of faith. Okay? Faith is the evidence. I said I want us to go to Hebrews 11. So faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the manifestation of things not seen. So it is the substance, a strong conviction, a surety, title, deed, right? And faith is the applied confidence in God. Ooh, I love that. Faith is applied confidence in God. 
and when when we come back next week we will talk about uh faith how faith by itself i think it's the week, uh, week three faith when we're talking about faith hope and love we will see that faith is not independent is not an independent weapon it is not an independent defense faith works with love and hope so it does not work by itself so faith by itself as it is is dead so you can have a dead faith yes you can have faith but you can have dead faith and so if you have dead faith regardless of how much you confess it's not going to work and we will talk about that on the third friday right ah yeah so let's read hebrews 11 hmm let me see let me read this other statement and then now i go to hebrews 11 um so we don't buy faith we don't earn faith um faith we have we receive faith right and i'll read uh was it romans i'll read romans let me see where i wrote romans 12 3 let me read 12 3 and then i go to see how how we we get this faith right romans 12 3 are you there are we are you with me are we together and you leave a comment please romans 12 3 the bible says for i say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. As God, the last line, Romans 12, 3, the last line, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So it is God who deals with us faith. It is God, God who gives us faith. So it is from God that we receive faith. So faith comes as a package of uh, our salvation. So, And we cannot be saved without faith. As we were looking at the other day, I was reading um, Romans 10 when I was talking about how to be born again. I read Romans 10, I think from verse 6 all the way. But let me read verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which you preach. So the word of faith, you have it, right? You have the word of faith. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So those are the ingredients, and that is... um. That is how faith works. Faith works by believing, and it's not only believing in the head. As I said earlier, that you can believe in your heart and have doubt in your head, right? So the word of faith is in your lips because you have heard the gospel. As soon as you hear the gospel, then faith is built in you because faith comes. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But it comes to us from within us. It does not travel per se. Like when we say faith comes, it does not travel from anywhere because God has already dealt a measure of faith. It's like how I am speaking, I'm projecting my voice out, right? You're hearing my sound, but my sound is not coming from anywhere. It is coming from within me. So if you have the God kind of faith within you, um, and now when we say faith comes, it is that faith is projected. Because it is with your heart that you believe and confession is made. So you believe in your heart, then you make confession. And your head is not involved. Remember, a, a human being is a soul, a spirit that lives in a body. So you are a soul, you, you are a spirit man. Let me put it rightly. You are a spirit man, you have a soul, and you live in a body. So faith does not involve the head or the flesh. Faith is of the heart, right? Faith is of the heart. The soul has to be fed with the word of God. The more you speak the word of God, and we say the soul is the part of a human being that is the intellect, you know, the emotion is there, uh, the feelings are there. 
but the soul and the heart and the spirit are not the same. Maybe I'll talk about it on the third day. I'll see where to incorporate um, what I'm saying right now. But faith is of the heart and not of the head. Because you can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head. You can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head. And that is totally okay. So what is not okay, and I'll talk about this on Friday, what is not okay is confessing what is in your head. You need to confess what is in your heart and not what is in your head. So if you have faith in your heart, let that come out of your mouth. Let whatever comes from your mouth is what is in your heart. As we have seen, the word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart, the word of faith which we preach. So the more you continue to hear the gospel, the more you hear the word of truth, the more you are able to confess. But if you are empty, you are devoid of the word of God, then what comes out of your mouth will be emptiness and you will only, uh, you will start speaking what is in your soul. But what is in your soul is not always God, especially if you have not renewed your mind. It is not always of God. So you need to continually renew your mind so that your spirit and your soul uh, are in the same line. Like David said, let the meditation of my heart and we do not me just meditate in the heart, the spirit heart. We meditate in our soul. That is where the meditation happens, right? We meditate in our souls. We think about the goodness of God. We think about what God has said. And that is where the meditation is going to happen. And so let the meditation that is going on within your soul be what, let your soul be fed by your spirit. In other words, let your soul be fed by your spirit. And you need to feed your spirit the word of truth. Feed your spirit the word of truth so that the soul has things to think, to meditate and so that what is coming out of your mouth is in sync with the spirit and with your soul. Okay? But if we confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from... So this is how we are born again. So this is how from the beginning, from the time you're getting born again, you have faith. So you cannot be 10 years in salvation, 2 years in salvation... And you're saying you don't have faith. This is the very, the very same faith you had during salvation. If you are convicted that for sure you are born again, then you have a measure of faith. So what happens is that we all have a measure of faith. Some have exercised their faith. Some have fed their faiths and some are using their faith so if you are not exercising your faith in that you are not confessing what is in your heart your faith will be weak right if you are not exercising your faith you're not feeding and exercising your faith that means you will not have strong muscles that your conviction will not be able to move that mountain because your confession is going to be different from what is in your heart so our hearts already have the God kind of faith. But what uh, the whether our faith works or not is determined with how we confess. With our confession. is determined by our confession. Mm. Verse 11 in Hebrew, Romans 10, verse 11 says, For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. So if you believe, if you have faith, if you are convicted, you cannot be put to shame. There is absolutely no way your conviction will put you to shame. It is not scriptural. So if you, if you have been put to shame, check your conviction. Check your conviction. Check what you are convicted. Check how your faith is. Check your faith. Oh, ye of little faith, he said, and then demonstrated. Like you can speak to the sea. And he said that greater things will you do than the ones that I have done. And we have the Holy Spirit. They were with Jesus there, shoulder to shoulder, that they were afraid. It is possible for us, we're here on earth, we're going to be afraid. But are we going to confess fear? Are we going to live our lives out, you know, like those ones who are waiting uh, for the day of the Lord Jesus Christ? We will enjoy our lives in heaven. I don't want to enjoy my life in heaven. I want to start enjoying, I want heaven to come down right now. Thy kingdom come. <laughs> I want thy kingdom to come. I want to enjoy the kingdom here. I want, when I go to heaven, it's a continuation of what has already been started here on earth. Okay? So we see that um, there is the saving grace that I have read about in uh, Romans. Let me see what is in Ephesians 2.8. Ephesians 2.8. And then we will go to Hebrews. Our time is moving. Our time is moving. 
feel free to ask questions in the comment box because we'll be talking about faith i could be dedicating the first few minutes to just respond to your questions thank you lord thank you jesus Ephesians 2 8 for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God all right I have already uh, spoken on that ex expressively that it is through faith that faith comes and it is through faith that we are born again so we don't buy faith we don't earn faith faith I've already told you what faith is so faith though I told you that I love this that faith is a way of living Faith is a way of living, and we know the just shall live by faith. That one we know. <laughs> so I will finish with uh, Hebrews 11. Allow me to kindly. Uh, so let me read Romans, Romans 1. Uh, Romans 1. And Romans is before Corinthians. Romans is just before Corinthians. Uh, and right after Acts. So Romans 1.17. Did I say 117? Let's see. For in it, no, let me read from 16. Romans 16 and 17. <laughs> For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed. <laughs> I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of of God to salvation for everyone who believes for the Jews first and also for the Greek <laughs> I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is power to those who believe so if I have faith I have power if I have faith I have the gospel I have power and we see this power this gospel is what we have read about earlier in Romans um, where were we in Romans uh, where were we 8 8 10 yeah no no 10, Romans 10, when we read Romans 10, Romans 10, 8, yeah, that is the word of faith that we preach, hmm? the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith that we preach, so the word of faith that we, we preach, this is the gospel, that faith in Jesus Christ is the gospel, faith in Jesus Christ is the gospel, and so faith in Jesus Christ, the gospel has power. So we cannot separate faith, the power, and the gospel. So the power of the gospel, the power of the gospel is in the faith and in the conviction that we have in the word that we speak. And so if you are convicted of what the word that you're speaking is all about, then you have great faith. And if you are convicted, you will not be ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jews first and for the Greeks. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So we will also talk about that. What does he mean from faith to faith? Is there this kind of faith and that other kind of faith? We will see about that. But I've already spoken about, I've already given you um, the saving, saving faith. I've already spoken about that in Hebrews 10. All right, and then he says, "For in the right in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, for in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. I love this because it means we're living a powerful life. Hmm." means we're living a powerful life and not a hopeless life. The just shall live by faith. Let's see what Galatians says. Oh my gosh, I need to go to Hebrews and talk about the faith of God. So Galatians is right after Corinthians. Galatians, Galatians, I am Mogekoyos. So Galatians 3.11, but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith, but that no one is justified. Let me read 10 and 11. <clears throat> for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, right? For it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident for the just shall live by faith. 
the just shall live by faith so faith is a way of living so now let's go to hebrews now we'll start with 10 hebrews 10 then 11 okay so hebrews is after some of the small letters after philemon timothy you know after you pass philemon timothy corinthians i don't know colossians philippians galatians uh, Philemon. So right after Philemon, you find Hebrews. And I don't know why. I always thought Hebrews is Ukombele, but it is Ukunyuma. So Hebrews will read 10 and then pro, uh, proceed on to 11. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So uh, we read 1038. <laughs> now, hey, the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. See, now we are seeing the heart of Jesus. We are seeing the heart of the Father. Let me read us from 36. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, that you may receive the promise. Right? This is the will of God. The will of God is for us to receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and not tarry. Now, the just shall live by faith but if anyone draws back my soul has no pleasure in him but again paul comes and consoles us paul or the writer of hebrews and said but we are not of those who draw back to perdition but of those who believe to the saving of the soul we are those who believe to the saving of the soul. And remember I said that I spoke about the soul earlier and said that we are going to dig deeper in the soul as the Lord allows. So we are those who believe in the saving of the soul. That your faith will move and, and move from being the faith of the heart. Move from having faith in your heart and doubt in your head. But you move from faith to faith. That what is in your heart and what is in your head is all in sync. So heart head and lips you know that which is in your heart that which is in your head meaning your mind meaning your soul that now you have become that mature man that you are able to think like christ that you have accessed the mind of christ and you can now say that i have the mind of christ the things that i think are in line with what christ thinks for me if christ is thinking healing for me is if christ is thinking wholeness christ is thinking prosperity this is my thoughts as well i'm going to think as christ thinks because i have his mind my mind is not like jesus's i have his mind i have it i have the mind of christ so i need to um, work on myself by meditating upon the word of God, by reading the word of God, by not removing my eyes from here and my mouth from here, because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So I want to pee, to feed my heart. I want to hide my uh, the word of God in my heart because I want the meditations of my heart. And my heart, that heart is not the heart of hearts. It is the heart of the mind. The meditations of my mind because we do not meditate in our heart we do not meditate in our spirits we meditate in our minds we imagine with our minds we travel in our minds that is where we need to travel where jesus has traveled and jesus has traveled to the end and the end says that it is finished when he's finally done at the cross when they have finally crucified him he said it is finished that is the end that is the end. And so if our minds are like the mind of Christ, we will know when he said it is finished, then we look at where it all begins. If it is finished, what, what is the next? The old is gone, the new has come. What is the new? And now we begin searching for the new. We begin searching for the new. And by searching for the new, we're now feeding our faith. Remember I spoke about feeding our faith? I also spoke about, you know, giving muscle to our faith. So now feeding our faith is searching the new. The old is gone, the new has come. Ah, Pana, I want to know the new. I want to know the new because I want to walk in the new. I do not want to be left behind, but I want to walk in the new. Now you're feeding your faith. 
And as you continue feeding your faith, now you begin giving your faith muscle by telling the mountains to move. You start giving your faith muscle by telling the, uh, the storms to become. You're now moving and exercising your faith and creating muscle in your faith by calming storms, speaking to sicknesses and diseases, and they live just like that. Just that. It was as simple as that. As simple as that. Let us now go to the Hall of Fame. Hebrews 11, verse 1, Shakataya. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. Faith 11, <laughs> faith 11. Hebrews 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, uh, let me go to, that is verse 1. We will read this entire chapter. There's a verse I'm looking for. Is it verse 3? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me read 1, 2, and 3. <laughs> All right. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, or the manifestation of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. There's a testimony somewhere. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So the Bible is telling us, if we are reading this correctly, walk with me. I have 10 minutes and then I'll finish. By faith, we understand. So this is something that we already know. The Bible is sure we know this. The Bible is sure that we know this. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Do you know that? Did you know that God used faith to frame the worlds? When we were reading the book of Proverbs, when we got to chapter 8, we saw how, how wisdom was present during creation. And he says, before the boundaries were set, I was there. Faith is also mentioned in creation, meaning that faith does not come. Faith existed even in creation. That we, Faith is not somewhere that we are going to get it. We have it. We have it. And the God kind of faith is the kind of faith that he exercised. God exercised faith here. God was convicted that when I speak, when I say light be, light is going to be. He was convicted. And that means God had faith. God was convicted that when he says, let the seas part, he was convicted that he's going to be. He did, not, he did not doubt in his heart. He did not doubt in his heart. And so let us go to Genesis. Uh, let us go to Genesis. Let us go to Genesis. And then I, I am finishing, I promise. <laughs> Me, yeah, the word, I love the word of God so much. The word of God is life. Shakataya. The word of God is life. My goodness. The word of God is life. Look at me looking at Genesis, looking for Genesis. I'm looking for Genesis. I'm looking for Genesis. There you go. In the beginning, Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. My goodness. <laughs> you do not need to have anything to exercise your faith. The Bible is telling us the world was without form. Have this in your mind. Just save it somewhere there. Just put it and highlight it. That God used faith. God was convicted. So we are looking at the condition of the earth or the condition of the art of the um, situation that God is calling things forth. The, earth, the world, the earth, first of all, was without form. But God is convicted that he's going to form something out of it. The world and the earth was void. But God is convicted that he's going to fill it with things. God is convicted that over here, darkness is just filled. And darkness was on the face of the deep. 
not only on the face of the deep, it was just darkness all over. But God was convicted. But when he says light be, light is going to be. First of all, what is light? First of all, from where will it come? First of all, what will be the source of that light? Is there Kenya power over there? Is there Kenya power over there? Like darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Hey, <laughs> verse 3 is where the juice is and I feel like I have just begun. <laughs> then God said, this is it. Now faith is at work. Now faith is at work. Then God said, Shakataya. Hey. Then God said, this is the condition. Void, darkness, formless, nothing. Just void. The spirit of God is just hovering. And when I, when I read hovering, I just imagine, you know, like a wind, like a force of the wind. He's just hovering over the face of the deep over the face of the waters, just hovering. You know, when you go to, uh, to Mombasa or wherever and you go into the beach and you're going on with the boat, how you see the wind hovering and the waters are moving as the wind is moving. And when you see the waves coming, you know, I was there recently and I was thinking, oh my God, is this how the spirit was hovering over the face of the waters? And as he is moving like this, God said, he is convicted. And we said earlier that faith is of the heart, but it needs to come from the heart and come out through your mouth. Having faith in your heart and saying nothing is death. As I said that there is dead faith. So if you have faith, but you, can, you do not confess what you believe, what you are convicted about, your faith is dead. So God's faith was not dead. Then God said, let there be light. The second verse said, there is a comma. There is a comma. The second verse does not say. And then it stayed for so long. And they had to invent light. They had to plan how light is going to be. They had to write, you know, um, a proposal to a certain company to formulate light. They had to start analyzing Kwanza, what is light? What are the components of light? How far will the light go? What will the light do to us? Will the light be permanent throughout the day? They did not analyze anything. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light, comma, and there was light. God did not waver in his heart. He believed and therefore he spoke. And immediately he spoke. What Jesus has told us in the book of Matthew is demonstrated right here by the father himself. The father of lights. Remember James 3, I think 17 calls him the father of lights. And the father of lights has demonstrated here. And he is not the father of lights, the bulbs and, and, and the lights, the sun, the moon. He is the father of lights, us. We are the lights. Oh my God, I have three minutes. Let me read four, verse 4. And God saw the light. So you speak. First you believe. You speak. You see the manifestation. You behold. And he saw the light that it was good. And then God divided the light from darkness. Father, in the name of Jesus, I love you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You know how excited I am about speaking about faith to your people. I pray that this will make sense and that the, our faith will move from the heart to the head, to the mind, to the souls. And that, Father God, our confessions will be according to what we are convicted about. And we know that you have already given us the power to move mountains. You have given us the power, my God, to calm storms, to change situation, to alter destinies, to change the trajectory of our lives and those of our children. And by faith, we will do this because we are convicted that he who promised is faithful and you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So our faith is grounded and rooted in Christ our Lord. Oh, Jesus, I love you. I pray for your people and declare that your blessings 
are upon them, chasing after them, that they are favored in everything they do in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercies. We honor you and glorify your name. It is in Jesus' precious and mighty name that we have prayed and believed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you so much. I will see you again on Friday. All right. See you on Friday. Share this video if you can. All right. God bless you. Bye. Bye-bye.